You know, with two and a half million tweet, you know, Twitter followers, you know, we sort of supported her and got asked everyone to retweet. And, you know, with, it pretty much trended within the next hour. And, you know, that kind of got some decent news coverage. And, you know, what's the good that's come out of that? Well, the school dinners conversation is still a massive conversation. And at the moment, our head of education has taken away nutritional standards for the academy schools, which in this moment in time, with public health, is a disaster. So, you know, we're still chipping away at that. You know, just recently in America, we did a, a, a whole thing where we were seeding the story about pink slime. And I don't think you even knew what pink slime was. I didn't. No. So pink slime was kind of a, a fairly large story around America. And basically what it was, was the genius thing that is the FDA in America, um, which is a department that's supposed to protect public health, um, they struggle. Um, they allowed this company to, to take all the meat that, that was turned into dog food or soap, uh, wash it in ammonia, and then as long as it was up to 25%, put it back in the food system. And of course, it's very low quality. Um, and you know, when we started doing stories about it online, it just it, it literally trended everywhere. And very quickly, you start seeing the, the opinion of the American public, which is we don't like that, we don't want that. You know, there's videos of the process and stuff like that. So McDonald's pulled out, and then you know, within a month and a half, pretty much all the brands pulled out of this particular. So it's, I guess, the food industry is as corrupt and filthy as the arms industry and the oil industry, um, and they're probably around the same size. So. I guess my job is stirring the pot. You're trying to disrupt the food industry. Yeah, in a positive way, with true stories, you know. And, and what I what I find inspiring about my job, you know, we, we, we broadcast and publish in about you know eighty to one hundred and thirty countries around the world, depending on the project. Um, That's TV. Yeah, when you say and, we broadcast. Yeah, well, TV um, goes to about you know anything up to one hundred and thirty countries around the world, depending, um, and publishing about eighty, but. I have a, got a nice relationship with the audience and when you, obviously I'm given lots of data and the bits that I choose to pass on, they always, was, you know, basically what I'm saying is when you give the public good, clear information, they normally make good decisions. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Just, and you think you, you're succeeding in that disruption? Well, I, th I think our only hope is digital. I really do. I really, really do. You know, we've got communities around the world that find it really hard to be political. But actually, they care about certain things. So, I mean, you know, in Food Revolution Day, we started that in our little office. That went to, uh, you know, 60 countries around the world, 600 cities, you know, just for one day out of nothing, you know. And uh, but you, you could not like because there is media. You have tons of press. You can have all the press you like. The media are fantastic, and they can be fantastic if they want to be. Um, but. Uh, I think the, the public are main, I mean, mainly what we do in the campaigning stuff is we try and aggregate communities. So communi if, there's a commu if there's communities across the world, or America, or England, that are passionate about you know, teaching kids about food, growing, you know, things that aren't right in the community, there's lots of little wars going on everywhere. If what we do is sort of join them up and sort of make them a bit more powerful. So yeah, I, I don't know what you call it really, sort of facilitated activism is what we call it. Where, where do you hope to be with that plan that you have to disrupt the food industry? Well, I think it's just... It, I, I, I think it's happening. You're no, happy it's with constant. I, I think all of us can admit that when we're challenged with competitors or problems or issues or ethics, being eco-friendly, I mean, we're all on a journey. And I think forms of interrogation, whatever, in whichever way they come, are, are positive. So I, I'm just going to carry on doing it. I just hope more and more people Carry you measure the result? Um, I think measurement, I'll leave measurement for the kind of people. The problem about measurement is we've got loads of measurement about public health and no one does anything about it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So we know that diet-related disease is the biggest killer in the world and we've had Harvard and Cambridge tell us all the facts, but we still don't do anything aggressive about it. So I, I'm going to leave measurement to the measurement people. Okay, what can we do? Uh, what would, would you say to be you know, a good person, a good citizen of the world these days, uh, when you say no one is doing anything? What, what can we no, do? I, I, don't, I don't think no one's doing anything. What I'm saying is that this forum in front of us today and, and the people and the, with their mobile phones and their tablets, I think 
I think great decisions in the world will be massively changed because of this, not because of, of necessarily a marketing campaign or a big, you know. I mean, like, you know, when Obama signed up on Instagram, I was like, oh, here we go, <laughs> you know. Um, and actually, I was most offended by the quality of his pictures. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a very good picture. <laughs> if you're going to be on Instagram and push your politics, at least up your game. Um, and actually, he did. It got, it got a lot better, a lot quicker. But should we put good pictures on the Instagram? I'm a little confused, I have to admit, when I switch my phone on and I want to take a picture, do I Instagram it, do I Facebook it, do I bath it, do I Twitter it, do I... You see what I mean? Do I yeah. just do what you just do? Just do it on Instagram and choose yeah. on the options. So, so I, I mean, I think that's one of the, like I said before, one of the beauties of what we do is that we are so open and allow people to post to basically any platform. And you can use sites like If This Then That to trigger right. and, and broadcast to other places, like whether it's Dropbox, you name it, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and for us, uh, you know, I don't think it's about beautiful photos. And actually, one of my worries is that people prime themselves to think it's just like, if, if I want to post a photo, it's got to be beautiful. I actually think, you know, Jamie's used the word honest, and, and I would use the word genuine. If it's an honest and genuine photo, I think it goes really far. And, and we provide tools, I think, to make it more beautiful, but that's if, not a... If you go on the popular page, I mean, it's pretty obvious that, you know, it's, it is boobs and dogs um, and really sexy girls that, that um, still drive. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> that's still, you know, so if you want to get into a business, boobs, pretty girls and dogs is, is, is what moves. The but you, you create that, right? You, you remove that stuff. Well, I think what's interesting about what gets popular on the web is is popular, you know, it depends on who you are and where you are, and I think we need to do a better job of personalizing content. Because, you know, to someone like Jamie, maybe, you know, uh, it's about food, and to someone me, like me, maybe it's food, maybe it's wine, maybe it's, you know, technology, right? And I think we need to do a better job of creating these channels and these silos that allow people to, you know, learn new things about the world. But we well, have the content, and I think that's that's the point, is we have the content, it's about exploring it. Both of you, we have uh, a good thousand entrepreneurs here, and uh, maybe more online. Uh, what's your advice, like, to build, you know, because you build an incredible brand, you have an amazing movement that is changing the world, but you're also a very successful business person, entrepreneur. Uh, around, around yourself. What's your advice? Uh, and Tell I, me. I don't think. I, I, I'm, not, not, I'm not sure what I can give advice to these guys. I mean, all, all I can say is, um, I, I, from a personal point of view, people are always trying to get their head around how we do what we do, or the books, or the restaurants, or and, and I think genuinely and honestly, honesty, like. The medium, I mean, for me personally, I'm a massive geek. So whether it's cameras, film, broadcast, storytelling, pictures, you know, using a tablet, Instagram, the medium of telling stories or communicating or touching people's lives or inspiring them, I love. So everything that I do is really driven purely and only by creative ideas. And if they're good enough, then they, they make money. And if they're not, they won't. That's kind of how I look at it. And I, I, do you I, think they need to raise uh, funding, or do you raise funding? How did you? No, start we, we didn't. I mean, I, we, 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 when the banks misbehaved, we got a, a few private investors in. But I do, I do think for entrepreneurs, it's hard getting cash. Of course it is. Of course it is. And I think you, you know, you had some of the guys from the government um, up here earlier, and, and you know, and the government needs to be very wary about uh, you know us getting left behind here because it's. It's, it's not like being in San Francisco. San Francisco, if you stand there, if you're in a coffee shop, you know, you've got someone having a conversation here. It, it's like a, a melting pot of ideas and, and the joining up of the dots of a successful startup. Raising tens of millions. It's kind of there. Selling for a million and yeah. stuff like that. It's, it's, I, I think it's, we're nowhere near that yet here. It's, um, it's my personal Do you opinion. think it's changing? I think it's changing, but I think it's about a culture of facilitating the joining up of the dots, personally, but I mean, you know, I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm really not a digital expert, I just live in your world. But you're, you're um, a lot, you're a lot in the US, right? Or are you mostly here in town? Because you, no, you, you I, don't I, like I'm mainly, based, games? No, I'm mainly based here, but you know, like I said, we work in quite a lot of countries. Right. Kevin, what's your advice for entrepreneurs? I mean, I think entrepreneurs just need to focus on solving problems. I think too many entrepreneurs get caught up in the 
life of an entrepreneur, the late nights and the funding and all, all the meta stuff that actually doesn't matter. The, the, it's merely just the means to the end. Um, and I'd rather you know, see more entrepreneurs focusing on what big problems in the world they're solving. And I think that's you know, one of the things Jamie does really well is he solves really big problems or he's trying to solve really big problems. And the focus when we talk you know, on stage is about the problems we're trying to focus on and the things we're trying to solve. But um, too many entrepreneurs, I think, focus on all the rest of the stuff, which actually doesn't matter in the end. Because it turns out, if, if you try to solve big problems, there will always be funding behind you. There will always be people willing to work for you. There will always be you know, an audience for your product. And I think that's what we tried to do with Instagram, was we solved you know, a problem of being able to communicate visually. And, and a lot of people didn't even know they had that problem until Instagram came along. And many times that happens. So you can either be solving a problem that's very defined, or sometimes you can be solving a problem. Yeah, you know, you know, it's good when my nephew, who's six, uses Instagram, and my dad, who's sixty something, is using it. You know, I think that having that stretch of audience. What, what do you what, what you hope for your uh, what's his name again? Your six years old son. Uh, I've got a two year old son, but my nephew was six. Oh, nephew, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what are you going to tell your son to go to Silicon Valley and build a startup there? Uh, oh, I'll let him be who he wants to be, but I think, um, I think more, to, more to the case, I think, um, I think the world that this all represents, the digital world, um, the exciting thing is about quality and expression, whatever that may be, written word, film, pictures, um, and I think uh, in this day and age, anything that can communicate with the right people at the right time, So what's, what's the mindset that you'd like to tell him to succeed and tell this room as well? Is, is it try to change the world? Is it no, 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 to, you know, to become an entrepreneur and, and, and be slow? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that's the conversation I'm going to have with my son, really. I, I just want him to uh, grow up and be happy and find his own path, really. And even his own dad didn't want to change the world. And I, and I, I wouldn't even be so bold as to say that I am doing that. I'm just doing my job and chip, chip, chipping away. And sometimes, you know, you'll do a little thing and it goes crazy. And it's really only thanks to the communities of like-minded people. So I think... And you don't know what's... Yeah, yeah I think, I think the, great, the great thing about all this is that as much as you can talk about it, you still, it's still, it's still like a number one hit song. Do you know what I mean? You don't know which ones are going to stick. You don't know which ones are going to touch people or move people. Um, so your advice is experiment as you're doing? Experiment, experiment, see, see what's well, next. I, I genuinely hope. I mean, I don't think my kids are going to grow up to be academic because me and, and, and their mum aren't. Um, so I hope that they can have fun being creative and tactile and enjoy people and uh, cultures and learn. You know, that's, that's what I kind of do. So I hope that's what they do. And if they do it digitally, I mean, you know, it's a very different world now. You know, um, so, you know, porn has always been over delivery online. You know, hopefully everything else starts to <laughs> get up with it. But you know, I do think that bro I mean, broadcast is one of my big jobs, and I think I'm, I'm personally in broadcast. The industry has been really tough for 10 years, budget-wise, really, really tough. I mean, about 45% like for likes down in budget, massive, a humongous problem. Um, but we're just starting to see new new pockets of cash coming out of YouTube. Uh, and, and raising funding for your little proper real cash to make unique content for digi digital platforms and, and, from, and that's happening now which is new and um, I think what's exciting about that is you know I don't know if we'll be watching telly in 10 years time I really don't I know everyone talks about it and, and we're all predicting it but I think I think now it's getting bedded in a lot's going to happen in the next three years particularly um, and I'm not sure if we're ready for that you know the flow of money all of that stuff but I'm excited I'm really excited about okay, it. So Kevin, what's, what's coming next for you? Um, you know, we're just still really hard at work on new product ideas and features. Like I said before, I think we have all this data we want to let you explore. And it's not just about creation, it's also about exploration. Um, so that's what we're going to be most active in going forward. I think you're going to see Instagram evolve in really interesting ways going forward. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Any final word, uh, Jamie, for that uh, audience? Good luck. I mean, you know, this is, I've never done one of these before, but um, you know, it's always exciting to get 
in these kind of things like TED and Le Web and One Young World, it's always, it's always a group of really, really interesting people. Um, it's, it's like a natural filter, isn't it? So, how do they interact with you? How do they? How can they get in touch with you? So we, you know, me personally. Yes. Maybe. Well, I mean, I have a conventional way of getting hold of me on the, on the website and, and through contacts. Um, but to be honest, they're probably more likely to get me on Instagram. You know, <laughs> to be honest, and uh, you know, but you know, one of my guys is here today. But um, I'll, I'll pass the message. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, I think it's, it's, it's great. I mean, one of the things that we did a few years ago was the apps. And I think that was interesting seeing how immediately that translated into sort of loyal following with the phones and the recipes. And yeah, you have a huge community around yourself and then you took it. But how that can move on a step, I think, is going to be interesting. Don't know. Let's see. Excellent. Well, we hope you can come back and, uh, you know, we can yeah. follow up and help you. Thanks, yeah. thanks for invading England with an army of French. It's, it's, uh, next time, make the croissants a bit better, for God's sake. I can have you in Paris as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope to have you again. Thank you.